Jinkies, what is this place? This is where Warner Brothers justifies this. What is this? Warner Bros. built this central finite curve where every Velma, every Jinkies you ever jinked exists. Every Shaggy, Norville, Fred, Redshirt Shaggy, Scooby-Doo, all of them exist here. So, so what? Are you supposed to be evil? No. Anybody who doesn't act like the old gang turns into outcasts. Just look at Mystery Incorporated. Who? Exactly. And that's why I'm going to escape from here. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Animated Cartoon Conspiracy Theory. Try not to escape the finite curb and that subscribe button. And if you haven't noticed, we got plenty of more mysteries solved on the channel here at Courage Media Group. You know, like who SpongeBob's real parents are, or maybe the end of Avatar, the series as we know it. Mind you, the theory over here at Courage Media Group came out a little bit before somebody else's theory that we know of. And if you didn't know, there's a whole new Scooby-Doo series that's going to tie in to a bigger theory that already exists on the channel. Now, and if you've never watched Scooby-Doo, it features Fred, Velma, Daphne, Shaggy, and of course, Scooby-Doo. They go around Crystal Cove and of course many other places to solve mysteries that they've been hired for. Basically, they're mystery detectives for hire. And with that, you have a group of young adults who feature archaic stereotypes like the jock, the pretty girl, the smart chick, and the guy who loves to eat. Almost reminds me of a whole nother group of kids in high school who kind of solve mysteries. Regardless, Scooby-Doo has been a timeless classic that has gotten rebooted again and again and again and again for each new generation to experience the perilous mysteries of Crystal Cove and beyond. But of course, there's been one reboot who has been making headlines and taking the internet by storm. And of course, we're going to be talking about the new series, Velma, and how it might be tying in to the multiverse of Scooby-Doo. Now that if you spend no time on the internet, then that's probably good for your mental health, but you've probably missed out on the rage-inducing discourse that's been happening on the internet regarding this series. Now that this new Scooby-Doo series is a mature TV show, which is actually partially the reason why the new Velma series dropped the Scooby-Doo name, because the executives, quote, said that Scooby-Doo was for kids, and Velma, well, is for mature audiences. And since Scooby-Doo is not going to be in the series because it's for kids, this brought out a whole lot of Scooby-Doo fans you never knew existed. Where you would hear disappointing comments like, that's not my Shaggy, Mindy Colling is ruining the show, and they done messed up my boy Fred and made him an incompetent idiot. Well, firstly, what if I told you that the show is not as bad as everybody thinks and kind of gets each core of the character correct while flipping it to use it for the charm of the show? Now, I bet you're wondering, what is his score? You better not give it a 10 out of 10. Well, in all honesty, my score is a 5.5. So it's not the rage inducing score that everybody thought it was going to be, but the show is way better than what I expected. And with that, I say it's better than getting a Scrappy Doo. <sighs> Please, no Scrappy Doo. Now, then, of course, you may be wondering what is the Scooby Doo multiversal theory? But before we completely dive headfirst into that mystery, we must explain where it all starts. Originally, there wasn't a multiversal theory. And now you may be wondering which is it? Is there a multiversal or is there not? Well, I'd like to say that the original theory was that there was a split theory. And if you go back through the Scooby Doo series, you can see where this might have started. And it all hinges on Shaggy. Throughout a majority of the iterations of Scooby Doo, you see Shaggy dons a green shirt. And if you've been watching Scooby do for a long time, you might remember a point where Shaggy's shirt wasn't quite green. And mind you, this is a significant point in the split theory, because Red Shirt Shaggy and Green Shirt Shaggy are not the same person. The existing theory goes on to state that Red Shirt Shaggy might be a digital replication of original Green Shirt Shaggy. And a movie spinoff that kind of helps to confirm this is Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase, where Scooby and the gang get yeeted into the digital verse and meet the digital version of themselves, which happened to be Red Shirt Shaggy and Red Collar Scooby. So all in all, the split theory basically says that Red Shirt Shaggy is the digital clone of Green Shirt Shaggy and every iteration with Red Shirt Shaggy in the past is also the digital version of them as well. Although this theory is cool, it doesn't really explain all the other times that, you know, changes were added to Scooby-Doo. Anybody else remember White Shirt Shaggy where he was fighting like a fascist dictator with ninja skills? No, just me. Anyways, the split theory has a couple holes. It doesn't explain all of the other iterations of Scooby-Doo. Yeah, maybe it's cut and dry that there's a red shirt Shaggy and a green shirt Shaggy. It doesn't explain white shirt Shaggy. Movie spinoffs where they meet Batman or even Courage the Cowardly Dog. We don't talk about what they did to Houston up there. But today I'm going to attempt to superimpose a better theory. 
a multiversal theory. And guess what? This theory is going to help flesh out all the little nooks and crannies within the world of Scooby-Doo. And in order for us to completely understand the multiversal theory, we gotta check out this one spinoff of Scooby-Doo that was targeted at more mature audiences and found itself inside of the discussion regarding this new Velma series. And of course, I'm talking about none other than the Scooby-Doo spinoff known as Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated. Now, surprisingly, a lot of people actually didn't know about this series' existence, which is sad because it seemed like it was going to go into bigger and better things after the series finale. It was probably canceled early because people don't like change. Regardless of my favorite iteration of Scooby-Doo being canceled, Mystery Incorporated holds the golden piece that unravels this multiversal theory. And like I said, Mystery Incorporated is much, much different than any other Scooby-Doo iteration. If anything, it's one of the most story-driven and story-focused series that has ever existed in the Scooby-Doo franchise. Especially since, you know, every monster was actually real in this series. Every cryptid, every monster that they dealt with in Crystal Cove within this series was real. And I think that was majorly part of the charm of the show. The stakes were really high for this team and I highly recommend watching it. This has always been a 9 out of 10 for me and if you don't want me spoiling anything in the future, go watch the only two seasons in existence then come back here around 5 minutes and 50 seconds. You have been warned. Now then of course if you don't remember, in the latter part of season 2, Scooby-Doo and the gang were at the climax of figuring out the mystery of the Anunnaki, a mysterious alien race that possessed Scooby-Doo's girlfriend and stopping the monster known as Pericles who wants to take their power for his own and learn that they were living in a time loop. Oh yeah, this wasn't the first time that they actually had to do this. They've done this dance before and after defeating the evil Pericles have reverted the world back to a place where they never solved any mysteries. And that's why it was so cool because they broke out of their own time loop and had more and bigger mysteries to solve. And that's why you should press that subscribe button because we do that here too. But this ending is super important to the multiversal theory because although they broke out of the time loop, they also figured out there was the existence of multiple timelines. And this is what this professor had to say. Arlen Ellison here. You can call me Miss Tree. I know who you kids are. And I know that you've created an alternate timeline by destroying that evil entity. How do I know this? How, you ask in your purblind ignorance? It's obvious as antlers on a chihuahua. I'm genius. All my years of writing speculative fiction has hypertuned my psychic mnemonic connection with alternate dimensions. That's why I'm able to remember every timeline ever created. And believe me, this has happened before. And if you weren't as surprised as I was after learning this information, you probably didn't appreciate this show as much as I did. Because with that big drop of information, that tells us this one thing. Every iteration of Scooby-Doo is canon. I know, I know, this amazing show that was forgotten by these apparent Scooby-Doo fans missed a very important piece of information from this show. So that confirms everything from the live actions, the split theory, and white shirt Shaggy. And this brings us back to the Velma series. Because say what you will about the series, the Velma series also further confirms the multiversal theory. So without showing too much stuff so we don't lose our chance of getting monetized, we see in this new Velma series that follows her throughout her teenage years that Velma looks different because not only is she a totally different ethnicity now, so is Daphne and Norville. You know, Shaggy. And although this is missing Scooby-Doo due to an executive decision, this is also an origin story because four episodes in, the gang isn't quite the gang yet. And it seems like the big reveal at the end is to have the gang become united. And for some reason, there has been a weird rumor circulating saying that Scooby is going to be introduced as a African-American female who Norville will be dating, which is 100% unfounded. Because without spoiling too much, at the end of episode 4, they revealed that this girl's name will be Gigi. This rumor is almost as bad as the lounger from the new Little Mermaid being a CGI monstrosity. It's almost like somebody's trying to destroy any movies with ethnicity changes. Regardless, within multiverses, you always have doppelgangers. So what do I mean by that? If you ever seen shows like Rick and Morty or any Marvel movie, then you know whenever you split off into a different timeline, there's gonna be minor or major changes between characters. And if you're old enough to watch the Velma series, then you've probably noticed that Norval's dad looks more like Shaggy than Norville and that Fred's dad happens to share the same exact voice actor for Fred. So does that mean in a weird cosmic twist of fate Shaggy has become Lamont and Fred is his own father? Well because of Mr. Incorporated it's very much possible and that all the major changes that we see that the Velma series has is because it's another split timeline that Scooby-Doo and the gang is not 100% aware of. So there's a lot of other questions to be answered. Will Norville change his name to Shaggy? Possibly. Has Fred always been this dumb? My yes. My brothers are gonna teach me a move called Happy 
Happy Tapioca. Has Velma always been this blunt? Yes, and it's always been very much uncool. And that's it. That concludes our theory. Mystery Incorporated broke a time loop and dropped the biggest piece of lore in the Scooby-Doo franchise, helping to explain the bigger multiverse that exists within the Scooby-Doo universe while expanding on the split theory and all the different colored shirt shaggies. And if you haven't watched any of our other theories, we got another one coming right after this. There was a poll put up on the channel and I asked if you wanted one theory or two theories, and the people demanded two theories. So if you haven't subscribed yet, then you definitely don't want to miss that next theory that's coming out on the same day or right after this. So make sure to leave a comment of your favorite Scooby-Doo iteration, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you in another video. Bye bye